Hello, my dear viewers. Today, I am going to discuss on a very important topic that is a burning problem. Tick and tick bone diseases in dog. Now you know that while, while I go for tick, while I say about tick, everybody, every dog owners are very much disturbed for this tick population. They are very much afraid of tick. In dog, there are two types of ticks, which invade the dog, two types of ticks, which invade the dog. They are, one is Rebisphalus sanguinus, otherwise known as castor bean tick, and second is Ixodic species. There are species on Ixodix, they are known as brown tick. Now the question comes, how the ticks comes into the pet animal's body? Main thing, there are certain attributes which help to locate the dog as a host. One is dog's breath, other is body odor, other is sensing, next is body heat, then the carbon dioxide which has been excreted or exalted by the dog, moisture and vibration. These components allow the tick to come in contact with the dog population. Right Now the tick actually remain in the tip of the your grass or shrubs that remain there. But one thing I tell you, just like flea, the tick cannot jump or they cannot fly. They remain in a position we call questing. That means in search of the prey. When the dog, while it is in outdoor, Coming in contact with the grass or the shrubs, tick take the opportunity to jump upon the body. Initially, with the first pair of legs, they climb on the dog, and with the third and fourth pair of legs, they stick on the body of the dog. After sticking on the body of the dog, after proper placement of the dog, the tick with its tunnel suck, start sucking blood and stick to the body and go on sucking the blood of the dog. Now the question is, when a dog is outdoor, no, when a dog is, is indoor. If the dog is confined to an indoor position, in that cases, probability or possibility of tick infestation will be less or no. But when the dog is placed outside or brought outside or taken for exercise or walking or something else in the outside, the outside temperature and the humidity that actually creates a favorable environment for the tick population to grow and invade. Right? That's why moisture is very, very important. That's why April, May, June, these are the highest time when there is humidity, a lot of humidity. People perspire, right? And this humidity helps in the development of the tick, growth of the tick, multiplication of the ticks, right? That's why outdoor condition is very, very dangerous during summer time. I used to say, or doctor used to say, while you go for a walk in the outside, along with your dog, please see that it does not contact with shrubs, grass, or the street dogs. Otherwise, there is possibility of invasion. 
of the tick. Tick as a rule has got four life stages. This egg, larva, nymph, and adult. A female tick may lay 1,000 or more than that eggs, right? And from that eggs, millions, millions of um, ticks will be produced. Now, what happens when the tick invades? Tick used to suck and create a lesion, right? And with the saliva of the tick, right? They bite the area and throw saliva, some neurotoxin is being released from the tick. And at the same time, sometimes you try to pick up the tick. When you are going to pick up the tick, some of the part of the tick may remain there. And the, that becomes part of, that becomes a focus of infection. Immediately bacteria and the fungus, that means resident population, or resident bacteria and fungus, they immediately take the breath. They invade the area. And inflammatory, some inflammation is produced. We call buff, just like nodule buff. That means small nodules will be produced at the tick bite area. So at the, at the same time I tell you, if you pick up the, uh, the tick, and if it is not whole, Mouth is rem mouth, mouth remains there, so there will be a lot of irritation. Dog will start on gone itching and itching and itching because there is irritation. Mouth parts is remaining, lost there. We have removed the posterior part only. If you want to remove with the help of forceps, you will remove the entire part of the tick. That will be nice. If you can enter part of the tick and dip it in the kerosene oil or in the toilet. Now the tick bite, if you look at the tick bite, this is characterized by vascular trauma and tick saliva produces a component actually invite the neutrophils to attach. And there is edematous swelling, we call bump in the skin. At the same time I tell you, salivary secretion of tick emits neurotoxin which may lead to systemic signs and sometimes paralysis we call tick paralysis the lesions which are produced by the tick in the dog's body they are rough and uneven skin due to attachment of the tick constant itching and biting due to irritation there is inflammatory changes followed by ulceration. And if the tick is not removed from the body, he will pave the way for the bacteria and others, that means fungus, bacteria, other, to flare up, especially the bacteria to flare up and creating a formation of pustules. Sometimes fungal infection may also occur. And the pustule may burn, burst and the pass may emit and ultimately scab may be formed. You will find a lot of scab, scabby lesions in the body of the dog. Sometimes, you know, fly may affect the area, creating myasis or maggot formation. You will find whole maggot formation and oozing of blood from there. Maggot is a problem. And fly is there, plenty of fly is there. And they will immediately come and sit over there, lay eggs, and the larvae of the flies, known as maggot. There is also another part which will cut the blood capillaries, so they are losing of blood. So in that case, yes, that will be a problem. So constant itching and biting may produce pyotraumatic dermatitis, known as hot spot. Suppose the scab is there, if you remove the scab, you will find a very ugly, hot area and this is known as hot spot, which is very important. When the tick lodges in the ear cavities with good numbers, there is tremendous irritation of the ear, as a result of which dog starts vigorous scratching, vigorous shaking of ear. A lot of shaking, shaking that may create 
and inflammatory changes leading to otitis or there may be accumulation of blood in between the two layers of the ear and we call it hematoma. So hematoma may result as a consequence to tick bite or tick lodgement in the ear cavities. So if you look at the tick populations, if you see the location, most important location is the ear, then legs, right? And you will find in the head, right? In the legs, up, you will find ticks. And here is the most important area where you will definitely find tick. And tick creates otitis at the same time. When the dog goes on shaking the air, shaking the air, shaking the air, so there may be a rupture of some few vessels leading to accumulation of blood. We call it hematoma. Right? This is about tick. Now I am going to discuss on tick bone diseases. What are the diseases which may be produced as a result of invasion of tick to a dog? One is babesiosis. It's a very important disease. Babesia actually occur in all domesticated animals including your wild animals also, Babesia, right? Babesia in dog, we call Babesia canis. And this Babesia actually, they actually remain within the RBC and create, they break down the RBC, or we call hemolysis. As a result of hemolysis, the animal becomes anemic, at the same time, you will get coffee colored urine. Right? Sometimes you may, if the population is not that, the rupture is not that much, RBC hemolysis is not that much, you may not get red, red color urine. But you must definitely get a peak of temperature. Temperature will be very much increased. Right? So you will get temperature, you will get dullness, you will get inappetence, you will get anemia due to rupture of the RBC. Pale gums as a result of anemia and ultimately weakness and sometimes formation. Right? So Babesia is a problem. And Babesia is due to tick. So when you get temperature in a dog, immediately you search for the tick. If you get the tick and the temperature, so you can assume that it may suffer from some hemoprotogen infection of which Babesia is one, right? Sometimes Babesia may create death also. That is very important. Second is Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. This disease is very rare in our country because this is mostly the ticks comes from the deer. Here we do not get deer in that way. Therefore, we can skip up this disease from the arena of disease problem. Next is your next is your canine elisiosis. We call commonly we call echinus infection. It's very very rampant. Echinus infection is very rampant in our state. Not only state, in the country. Even in the or if you consider it worldwide. It is the most common and one of the most dangerous tick bone disease in dog. And it is caused by Rifisibulus sanguinus or isotic species. And the thing is this, the disease, the tick and the echinus. Echinus may persist for a long period of time, not manifesting any symptom. Little bit of temperature apathetic condition, morose condition, not playful, right? Sitting in a one position, not like to move. But subsequently, the symptoms may arise. And the symptoms include fever, loss of appetite, depression, 
वेट लॉस रानी आईज रानी नोज एंड मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट इज नोज ब्लीडिंग वी कॉल एपिस्टैक्सिस मोस्ट ऑफ द केसेस विच कम्स टू आस कम्स टू आस विद द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ एपिस्टैक्सिस नोज ब्लीडिंग and it creates agony it creates lot of concern about owner of the owner they immediately bring the animal to the doctor doctor you see my dog is passing blood from the nose right bleeding from the nose we call epistaxis right there are three types of bleeding one is hematemesis from the stomach hemoptysis from the lung and epistaxis from the nose right nose bleeding continuously there is bleeding from the nose that is same time if you look at the leg leg may be swollen right swollen legs these are the more or less symptoms and if you get and this is as a consequence to tick bite so tick is a vector for producing this e canis infection right so this is very important disease then another disease known as canine hepat hepatogenesis that is also protozoal disease caused by brown tick here also the dog will have fever runny eyes runny nose muscle pain and diarrhea it presents of blood right this is also due to tick and that is known as hepatogenesis next is very important i tell you many a time dog will come with the problem that the, my dog is not in a position to stand especially the hind quarter weakness of the hind quarter or sometimes paralysis we call tick paralysis and this tick paralysis is as a result of some toxin liberated from the tick salivary glands right during blood meal so salivary glands of the tick contains some neurotoxin and nerves are affected that's why the animal is unable to stand or there is paralysis or we call ticks paralysis and this paralysis used to used to occur within 2 to 7 days first weakness and generally progress 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 weakness ultimately paralysis so that is also one of the important cause of tick and the paralysis already i have described it may be paralysis of trunk arm sometimes head also they are not in position to move and sometimes respiratory failure and death and finally is canine anemia anemia is very very important loss of blood and sometimes we have seen that there is loss of more than 50% of blood and in our you know our index we say if the loss of blood is more than 50% in that cases blood transfusion is the only answer and in our we don't have any blood bank and that would be a very very problem for us to treat such an right we only supplement with some preparations which may augment production of or correction of anemia now this is about tick now if you go for the treatment i am not going to give the, give the elaborate treatment protocol because it is the task of the veterinary doctor but i am mentioning some of the procedure which are generally adopted in order to eradicate the tick or in order to kill the ticks number 1 oral there is a ta- there is tablet oral tablet single right oral single tablet is available 
if you give that tablet orally and your dog will free from tick at least for four to six months. But again I tell you, while you give some such tablet, read the instructions of the level. At the same time, there may be some adverse reaction too. That should also be taken into consideration. So before giving this type of tablet, one should see about the state of health of the dog prior to giving this oral treatment. Then there are another tablet, oral multiple dose. We give at seven days interval, sometimes at three days interval. Oral tablet is also available and manufactured by different companies. We can try with that also. Then we have got injection. That also we can give at periodical intervals, seven days intervals like that. And it is also manufactured by various companies. We can go for injection also to remove the tick. But again, I tell you the main thing is that you should look at the animal's state of health. Then you select what component you are likely to give. Then we have got preparation known as pour on. That means starting from the head region, you go on putting the Preparation drop by drop on the body of the animal. This is known as poron. And this has to be done as per the body weight of the dog. Then there is a preparation known as pot on. Right? That can be put in the head and neck junction. Right? Just rub it there. The entire content should be rubbed. So it should come in the contact with the skin. Right? And that spot on also will at least prevent the tick population to invade for at least few months. And it has to be taken into, while you are purchasing, you should purchase according to the body weight. Because spot on with, coincident with the body weight of the dog. Various type of spot on is available. And according to your body weight of your dog, you select the component. Then we have got shampoo. Tick shampoo is available. Herbal shampoo is available. Even the your organophosphorus compound, impregnated, uh, impregnated shampoo is also available. You can apply the shampoo. But while you apply the shampoo, tie the mouth of the animal, and then apply the shampoo. Right? Then wash it and then remove the, untie the mouth, right? These are the different. Then we have got the powder also, ectoparasitic powder. You can dust the powder and we call, we call dust and brush. Dust, keep for some time and brush. So many of the tick will be eliminated. Then we have got the tick collars. You can put a collar in the neck and that collar will make your dog free from tick at least for four to six months. One precaution is that while you go for while your dog goes for bathing, it has to be removed. With collar, don't go for bath. Remove the collar, then allow the animal to go for bath. So this is about the treatment. But how you prevent this? How you prevent? That means what are the measures to be taken so that my dog does not suffer from any tick invasion or tick population. So most important is that if you have got a house or lawn, clean the grass and shrubs of the lawn or premises, right? Premises, there should not be any grass. And if it is the grass or that, it should be sprayed with some agaricide or insecticide or some organ of phosphorus compound periodically so that ticks cannot grow, ticks cannot harbor, ticks cannot live. Then avoid the personal contact with the street dog. When you are going through the street, 
some dogs may come and touch your body, you can also pat their animals and this thing, that thing. So, some of the ticks may remain in your garments, in your body. So, during this period, please try to avoid the contact with the street dogs. And you, you carry the germ, and you touch your animal, and you just spread the infection. So in that way, infection may spread from the human beings. That's why I'll suggest that try to avoid personal contact with the street dogs as far as possible. At the same time, don't allow the street dog having a lot of tick burden to enter into your premises, premises or in your house premises, right? Many times we have seen that, you know, premises or we call baranda, a lot of street dogs are staying and the owner is feeding those street dogs and the street dogs is having a lot of ectoparasitic burden or tick burden. So there is possibility to carry the infection to the pet animal, right? So that part also has to be taken into consideration. One should take care of it. If you can maintain the biosecurity, that means all the components which I have told, you can avoid them. So chance of entry of the tick will be less. And therefore, adoption biosecurity is very, very important. And again, I tell you, if your animal remains in the indoor condition and dry condition, the tick will automatically die due to dryness or desiccation, right? And they will die. And if they, mostly what happens in light, I'll tell you, in indoor, indoor condition, in indoor condition, the tick will crawl through the walls. They will crawl through the walls. Ultimately, they were desiccated and drop from the walls and die. Many a time, I tell you, a pregnant tick carrying the eggs and full of blood, full of eggs, engorged with blood, they will also crawl from the wall and jump and burst out and all the millions and millions or thousands of thousands of eggs will be there in the environment and from there tick will grow. So dryness is very important. If you can make your environment dry, tick will be under desiccation and wither off. So again I tell you sometimes the indoor treatment or house treatment is required. So what we do actually with the help of some acaricide, we spray in the house, keep the door and others closed for some time, fumigate the area so that the things which are there in the crevices of the walls, right? So all the ticks are killed. Then you open the door and on the fan, everything is all right. In this way, we can clear the room also. Indoor also we can create with the help of some organophosphorus compound or acaricides which are available in the market. In a nutshell, tick will remain in the environment and if we are not vigilant enough to make a barrier or give a check guard, so this will continue to invade the population and will have to remain with the tick for time in order. So therefore, my suggestion would be that don't love the tick, try to destroy it in the interest of dog and in the, at the same time for the interest of yourself. Because Lyme disease is a disease. I'm not mentioning about Lyme disease. Lyme disease is a disease which not only occur in dog, but also occur in human being also. Therefore, we are also at danger. 
and therefore clean it with therefore try to kill the ticks and save your dog hope you are liking our video today if yes like share and comment also subscribe our channel we will be coming soon with a new interesting video very soon